minister of the word of God and what a great job he did. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, we had, at least up until now, we've had, <laughs> I tease him a little bit, amen, uh, just a little bit, but his dad, Brother Dethridge, if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about, amen, he'll, he's, he, he'll tease you, but if he teases you, it's because he likes you, amen. Praise the Lord. That's a, a stamp of approval. Isn't that right? Praise God. Well, brother, you sure did a wonderful job this morning. I sure look forward to hearing you tonight. Why don't you come and bless these folks, what God's laid on your heart. Praise God. I got a water right under here for you as well, all right, in case you get a little thirsty. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad for the blood here tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That songwriter, he said it right. He said, had it not been for the old rugged cross, hallelujah, my soul would be lost. Thank you, Jesus. If you got your Bibles here tonight, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Hallelujah. If you've been in church probably more than twice in your life, You've probably heard this portion of Scripture. Hallelujah. And if you haven't, you you about to. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 17. I'll say it once again. It is a privilege to be here and honor, and I appreciate the opportunity to preach this glorious gospel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we're thankful for all the giving, all the accommodations. Everything has been great. Appreciate your pastor. Hallelujah. Even though he might tease me. And you say, well, you like me so far. Well, you just, you just let me stay around a couple more days and you'll, you'll send me away. You, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm glad for Jesus here tonight. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 17, and let's begin reading in verse 38. Hallelujah. Amen. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. David girded his sword upon his armor. It sounded like David's ready to fight. Right. David's got some weapons. Hallelujah. Now, you know, no matter your political beliefs, because I know people got different views and, and whatever. I'm not, I don't really care what your political beliefs are here tonight. That ain't my business. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this. It really don't matter who's in the White House. Now, now, I want you to understand, I, I, I'm not always happy about what goes on there. But I can tell you this, it really don't matter. If the church is really who the church is or who they're supposed to be, it don't matter. For God puts in power who he wants in power. So you need to understand, if God didn't want him in the White House, he wouldn't be there. Hallelujah. I know that a lot of people, their world fell apart when Trump didn't go back in office. Now, whether you wanted him in or not, that's, that's whatever. I don't really care. But I can tell you this. Is Jesus king of your heart? Hallelujah. It don't matter who your president is. It doesn't matter who's your king. Hallelujah. What do you mean? David got all these weapons. He said, this ain't going to work. Hallelujah. Trump was never going to bring revival. Trump wasn't going to stop revival. You know who brings and stops revival? It's what happens in here. Hallelujah. What the church does. What I'm saying is, is we can get all the weapons the world says we need to do to have revival, and we won't have it. Hallelujah. All I can tell you is we get the weapons Jesus has for us, we'll have revival. Oh, that was for free. We, you, can't, you can't put that on my time. Hallelujah. Oh, but, and David girded his sword, soft sword on him, and he was saved to go. He didn't want to go. He didn't say, I can't go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off for him. He took them off. And he took his staff in his hand. And this is where I want to preach. And he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And he chose him five smooth stones. Out of the brook. Hallelujah. If the Lord would help me for just a few moments here tonight, I want to preach on the thought there's victory in the brook. There's victory in the brook. Oh, why don't you lift your hands. Help us pray here tonight. Heavenly Father, God, we ask you all that you'd come, Lord, anoint me, God, to preach your word. Your word alone, God, that you'd anoint me and set my soul blaze on fire to you, God, that I might go over and proclaim your words. God, give me the words to 
This mighty and wonderful name we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad there's victory? Hallelujah. The songwriter said there's victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, but I want us to understand one thing about this portion of scriptures. Oh, the giants were always, or it seemed like they were always prevalent or ex in existence there in the promised land. Oh, the Bible says if you read far enough back when they first come to the promised land, the Bible says they saw what in the land? They saw giants. A part of the evil report of those ten spies is they said there's giants and we're but grasshoppers in their sight. Also they, they said there's giants. Oh, you, you, you could trace the giants back to this or that and Goliath was probably uh, descendants of these same giants. Oh, and there's, there were different giants that were defeated. How many know you know who Caleb defeated? He went and defeated the giants. The very people they said we can't defeat they, uh, Caleb. Caleb at 80 years old, God gave him strength and he won the victory over the giants. Oh, but how many know the giants? It never ceased, uh, or it never seemed to cease that there was giants. Oh, David, he fought Goliath. Oh, and David, and later on in his life, he almost died at the hands of another giant. Oh, but there was another man, oh, that had victory over the giant. Aren't you glad uh, that there are other people that have victory in Jesus too? Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one serving the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I can do this. I, I'd serve the Lord if I was the only one. I'm glad I don't have to do it alone. Hallelujah. I'm glad for men of God like your pastor. Oh, and you great folks here. Oh, I felt the presence of the Lord in this house today. Oh, I'm glad that there are people that want to have victory over the giants of your of life. Oh, but I can tell you this. And if we're not careful, I, I remember... We were, we were somewhere and we were there for school and I'm not going to throw people under the bus but the preacher got up and I'm not throwing him under the bus I'm going to just tell you what he said basically he was telling all these young people and there was probably uh, there were several hundred of them there and a bunch of teachers and several pastors I mean a big group of people oh, there were probably five six hundred people there most of them young people from schools it was a Christian deal and he basically got up and told them uh, that they were just subject to the giants in their life. They were just, and there was no way out. They're all going to face giants, always going to have to fight them and all this stuff. And no matter what happened, they couldn't get from them and all this stuff. And I, I remember my mom, we got in the van going home and she she made sure she straightened it all out. She said, I want y'all to listen real quick. Uh, that there were giants in the land uh, because people didn't do right. Hallelujah. There were was giants in the land because people serve false gods. You say, how do you know that? The Bible says in the book of Psalms that because they did not drive them out, they became a snare unto them. That's what God said. He said because you did it, it become a snare. Hallelujah. Oh, I, are you throwing rocks? No, I'm here to tell you there's giants in the land. And if we turn a blind eye to them oh, and we say, well, this or well, that, and they're just there and they're not our problem and they're really not our giants. I don't struggle with that. I don't, you know, and I can tell you this, there's some people, and I'll throw little rocks here, some people think it's all right to socially drink. I can tell you this, if you really believe that you're a Christian, you wouldn't say, you know why? Because there are some people that cannot socially drink because one drink would make them an alcoholic and they go to hell. You say, I'm telling you, they may not struggle with it, but some do. Are you saying it's all right? No. Hey, you crazy if you think it is all right hallelujah you drink one time then it's all right to shoot one person as long as you do it in moderation brother but it ain't oh, it ain't but nonetheless what are you saying is hey think oh I don't struggle with it. I ain't got a problem with it it ain't that big of a deal let me tell you David fighting Goliath you got to understand this Goliath wasn't David's giant you know whose giant it was who, who was supposed to face Goliath was Saul you know, the Bible says Saul was head and shoulders over every man of Israel. If anybody was qualified to fight Goliath, it was Saul. 
But David shows up, and he's like, what's going on? I don't know about you, but, man, you show up with answers, and people get mad. <laughs> he said, I, who's going to fight this guy? His brother's kicking him down. Hallelujah. I'll get to preach here in just a minute. Just bear with me. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, but you see, I found, you know, you, you get excited for God, and usually you know who beats you down the most? There's other people that claim to be Christians. I've heard preachers tell me, they say, you get old, you're going to lose all that fire. All right, that's, uh, that, that, that you might have. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, your pastor says he don't move a whole lot. But, but everybody in this building has told me that he said he said that, says he moves a lot. And I've watched enough. He may not jump up and try to touch the ceiling. I'm not going to lie. This morning I was wondering if I could hit my head on the ceiling while I was jumping. But you don't really realize how much you're moving. Uh, but nonetheless, they've been telling me all this stuff. And I'm thinking, you know what? If that's the truth, what does it matter if, I'm, if that is the truth? You know, I mean, really, what's it going to hurt? If that, I mean, if it is the truth and, and I lose all the excitement, all that stuff, then you ain't got to discourage me while I got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to preach. Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> You helping me, but you ain't helping me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what? David shows up, and the only people to speak against him is his brother and the king. Hallelujah. What a terrible thing. You watch somebody get on fire for God, and they get a little excited. Oh, brother, I don't know if all that's real. I can tell you what ain't real. When you watch your TV... And you get mad because whoever your team is loses. That ain't real. I've seen people weep over soap, soap operas. People weep over the love stories. If you do, I don't really care. But it ain't real. There ain't no man in them love stories in this world like that. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you throwing rocks? No. I don't really, I ain't married, but I ain't working all day and ain't going to come, come home and cook a four-course meal. I don't even know how to cook. I don't cook for myself. Sonic is good enough. Praise the Lord. Will you? Hallelujah. What are you saying? Oh, there's a bunch of fake stuff out in that world, but people love it. I can tell you this, man, they'd be at that ball games and they get to shouting. I know what they do down in Arkansas when the Razorbacks are playing. Razorbacks ain't even good except baseball. And I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they get to screaming. They get to shouting. Oh, man, they pull that hat off. Oh, there's some of them, they, they rednecks. And they, they, they had to let a yee-haw every now and then out. Oh, I go. And when the Super Bowl happens, people's team wins. California, it's illegal to shoot fireworks off. You look out and there's fireworks going everywhere. I can tell you, you let the Raiders win a playoff game and it's the end of the world some places. Oh, you let them win, it's the greatest thing ever happened in other places. But that ain't real. Oh, do you say there are giants that are real? Maybe not in the eyes of men, but in a spiritual walk with God. Oh, and David comes out and he said, what are we doing letting this giant? And the giant wasn't even killing nobody. He just was talking. He was talking. And all David said is, who is this guy? Why are we letting him do it? I'll tell you this, I wonder is why do people let the giants all have victory over their life? I'll tell you why. It's because they're will not willing, number one, to pay the cost to have victory. And number two, they love the things the giant brings. Hallelujah. Oh, you know why people watch filth on TV? It's because they love that filth on TV. Oh, you know why people like junk out in this world? Oh, because the Bible says that if you love the world, you love the world. He said if you love the world, you're at enmity with God. 
If you love the world, you love not the Father. Oh, what are you throwing rocks? You know what I'm here to tell you is? It's because you love Goliath. You want victory over Goliath. You got to tell God, you know what? I, I love those things. I love wicked things. You saying I'm backslid going to hell? No, you said it by the way you act. I didn't judge you. Your actions judge you. I didn't judge you what you watch on TV judges you. I didn't judge you what you listen to on your phone judges you. The Bible says that God hates when people take pleasure in wickedness. The Bible says if you so much as say God speed to somebody in sin that you are made partaker of it. Are you here to beat me down? No, I'm here to tell you there is still victory over sin here tonight and you can have it if you want it. I said there's victory if you want it. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that's a God of victory? That David walked out on that battlefield and he was talking the way he talked because he knew his God. Or maybe not Saul's God, maybe not his brother's God, but his God was the God of victory. Now your God might not be the God of victory, but I'm going to tell you my God is. You come too late to tell me God don't set free from drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes. You come too late to tell me that God don't set free from depression and set free from anxiety and he don't set free from most things. You come too late to tell me that God don't feel with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You come too late because my God is a God of victory. I said my God is a God of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. The God you serve may not be. Hallelujah. I've seen some people say, well, you don't understand. You tell your baseball coach that and see what he said. That's what I thought. Hallelujah. What you're saying is, you, you, you don't tell your, uh, you don't tell your coach and you just don't understand. I just can't hit that ball. Well, then you're going to sit on the bench. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's not about what we understand. It's about results. Hallelujah. And we serve a God of results. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is a God of victory over our giants. Now, you can live in defeat if you want to. You can live where there's depression and anxiety, oh, and discouragement, oh, that rules over your home. I'm not saying you don't have to fight things, but you can have victory over those things. I can tell you this. You might go through some battles, but you need to remember, some people don't face every battle the same. You know why? Because God God brought Peter over the water, but he brought the children of Israel through it. Oh, but they were victorious, both of them, by the power of God. Why? Oh, that water didn't control them. Got to bring you over to he'll bring you through it. Remember that. If you're going through a trial, God can bring you through it. Or he can bring you over something. You worried about getting sick, God can bring you through it or he can bring you over it. Ah, oh, you worried about the things of life. God can bring you through it or he can bring you over it. Oh, and he'll make a way of it escape he said hallelujah why because he's a God of victory he's not a God of defeat he didn't come so you could live in sin he didn't come for you to be bound by these things of this world he didn't come that you have depression rule over your mind he didn't come for that he come to bring victory for whom the son has set free I said who the son has set free is a free indeed Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hurrying. That was my introduction. Hallelujah. And I'm not some pre pre preachers that have long introductions, short, short sermons. I'm vice versa. Hallelujah. But David told, I know I probably shouldn't have said that. Everybody just, everybody just zoned out, said this is too long. Oh, but I can tell you this, number one, before we get to that brook, you've got to understand one thing. As David told everybody who the victory was going to come through. Oh, I said, God, David told her. He said, listen, God gave me the lion and he gave me the bear. We touched on being faithful here this morning. He said, I was faithful and God gave me the victory back home and God will be just as faithful here and he'll give me the victory just the same here. Oh, and it's God and him alone. You see, when he walked out on that battlefield, he'd already let the dead vein religion 
pit crowd know who was going to get the glory for the victory. And when he walked on the battlefield, he told Goliath who was going to get the glory for the victory. Your problem is, is you want the glory. You want to do it on your own. You want to make things happen on your own. You want to fix it on your own. Let me tell you what you need to do here tonight is you need to make up your mind that I'll give God all the glory. I said I'll give God all the glory. Oh, why? Because you can't do it on your own. David walked out and said, listen, you come to me with these things, but I got a God and that's all I need. Oh, what you need is not another program. What you need is not a 10-step program except one. And that's Jesus and a little bit more Jesus. And then you need to get full of the Holy Ghost and get a little bit more Jesus. That's the only 10-step program you need. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told everybody, he said, my victory comes through God and him alone. Oh, for when David tried to do it his own way at times, you know what happened? He failed. He failed. Oh, but when he gave God the glory, oh, I can tell you this, God, the Bible says he's a jealous God. Oh, he ain't going to share the glory and the honor with anybody. The Bible says there's no flesh will glory in God's presence. Oh, he said he's a jealous God. What are you saying he is? Is give God the glory. In fact, the Bible says that there was an enemy king and Israel wasn't living right. But an enemy king said, listen, the only reason you won is because your God's the God of the valley. We'll fight you in the mountain. Our God's the God of the mountain. And God said, hold up. You ain't living right. So you ain't going. It's not because you're living right, but because my name is on the line. Oh, and God gave him the victory. God got the glory. I said, God got the glory. Humble yourself before God and he'll lift you up. The Bible says God resists the proud but he gives more grace to the humble. I can tell you this, humble yourself before God and give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He couldn't do it on his own and he knew he could not do it And in his own power, he could not do it in the weapons of this world. He rejected Saul's weapons. If you study the Bible, you'll understand one thing, or uh, one one of these things about Saul's weapons. It wasn't many people had swords. If you read far, you go back in 1 Samuel there, I think it's chapter 13. The Bible says because there wasn't basically blacksmiths in the land, and nobody had weapons except for Saul and, and Jonathan. And so and you, you, you got to understand all that. That's part of the reason David took the sword of Goliath. Not only now did he have a sword and nobody else had swords, but he had the sword of the champion of the Philistines. You see, the, the Israelites are out there fighting with pitchforks. Go home. I think it's chapter 13. It's somewhere around there. You'll find eventually you'll read long enough. Oh, but they said, there ain't nobody got weapons, so they sharpened their farm tools. Oh, but he had, he had the finest weapon man had to offer. Oh, but he said, listen, I don't know about all these things, but I do know what works. It's God. It's God. And oh, he got to the place. Oh, he knew that it's not going to come by our hands. And don't get me wrong, we need to work with our hands, but it's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to understand. This is where I get down. Really where I want to preach for just a moment. I've only preached like 10 minutes. (laughs) I don't really know how long I preach. Hallelujah. I'm just saying that. Hallelujah. But David, he got up. Now he's just got a stick and a sling. It's all he's got. It's all he's got. I mean, you know, he had a, 
He had his stick. The Bible says this is our rod. That's what the psalmist said. He said, thy rod and thy staff doth God. Oh, I can tell you, he had the word of God with him. That's all he had. He got the word of God. And he was going, he had that sling. And, and you know, I'm not necessarily a Bible scholar, but I feel like that was a lot of zeal. And that could be tied to a lot of things. He was, you had to put some effort into it. You had to sling that rock. Hallelujah. Oh, and he had to sling a rock, but he didn't have no rocks. I don't know why David didn't have any rocks. Or maybe he did. I don't know. No, but the Bible says simply he come to the brook and he began to pull things out of the brook. He pulled out five smooth stones. Now, and he began to pull them things out. You see, you need to understand something here tonight that victory's in the brook. It may, if it's not in our own hands, where's it at? If it's not by our own power, where's it at? David didn't use the weapons of Saul to defeat Goliath. He didn't use the weapons of his brother to defeat Goliath. He found rocks in a brook. He found rocks in a flowing stream that was put there by God. I can tell you this, what you need here tonight if you're going to have victory is you need to get full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to get in the flow of the river from heaven. You need to get where God's moving. There's victory in that brook. Oh, there's victory in the move of the Holy Ghost. There's victory in that brook. You want to have joy here tonight? You want to have peace oh, that surpasses all understanding? You want to have a hope of a better land and a future? You want to have revival in your home? You want to have victory over the giant in your mind? You want to have victory over the giant of doubt, brother? If you want to have the victory over the giants in your life, what you need is to get where the Holy Ghost is moving. You need to get where the glory is coming out. Oh, what you need is to get in the brook. Amen. Hallelujah. If we're not careful, we'll reduce the Holy Ghost down to a shout and a simple move or a run or a, or a dance. And it might make you do that. It may not. I'm not here to tell you what the Holy Ghost is going to do on the outside except make you holy. Oh, if you ain't holy, I don't care what else you do on the outside. You ain't got it. Oh, you throw rocks? No. Oh, the Holy Ghost has come to give you power to live a victorious life. Oh, that you don't live in sin. Oh, I've seen a lot of people, the problem that they have with the baptism of the the Holy Ghost is a no if they get it it'll give them victory over something they don't want victory but let me tell you here tonight don't let that tie you down and keep you from what God wants to do I can tell you this you say well yeah I don't know about all that I can tell you this if you don't like it the devil always take you back oh the dead vein religion crowd always take you back why don't you just try it it ain't gonna kill you if it does you'll be alright you'll be in heaven hallelujah Oh, hallelujah. Everybody gets mad you talk about heaven, man. I'm thinking, where are you trying to go? I don't know where you're trying to go. I, I'm trying to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, a lot of people, what are you saying is, it's trying. What's it going to hurt to get in where the Spirit of God is moving? What's it going to hurt? I can tell you this. It ain't going to make you go home and beat your wife. It'll make you treat your wife right. It ain't going to make you go home depressed. It'll give you joy. You say, how do you know? Because there is joy in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I can tell you this there's peace in a mind that is stayed on Jesus. Uh, there is a hope, a blessed hope, the Bible says. You can have it. There's victory here tonight in the brook. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 If the Holy Ghost makes you run, jump, and shout, I'm glad for it. I'll, ch I'll run with you. I'll jump with you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad for the moving of the Holy Ghost that gives you, oh, makes you feel good. Hallelujah. I've preached when I didn't feel good, but when I got to preaching, I got to feeling good. Oh, and then I got done preaching, I was sick again. Hallelujah. Oh, so I'm glad for the Holy Ghost touching my physical body. Oh, I'm glad 
breath for the moving of the Spirit of God. Oh, but I can tell you this, what's in that brook is that Holy Ghost baptism. Oh, I can tell you this, some people say you don't need it. I'm going to tell you this, you know what, the two doctrines that run together, oh, there's the one that you don't need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and one saved, always saved, seem to always run together. You know why? Because you can't live holy without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you got to believe one saved, always saved, because you can't live free from sin without. You throngs know what I'm here to tell you is, is God gave you the keys. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. He gave you the keys to victory, and that's getting full of the Holy Ghost. You say, I don't know about all that. I can tell you this, there's a lot of things you don't know about, but you get in your car and you drive down the road. You know how that thing works? Somebody tell me exactly how your car works. Some of you might know, but most of you don't. A lot of you get in a plane, fly all over the place. Uh, you, how do you know You know how that thing works? I'm going to tell you real quick. It's the air going over the wing faster than it does on the bottom. That's how it works. Hallelujah. It's not about the wind coming out. It's about going over. You look it up. Oh, I forget the technical term. I'm not, I'm not a dude to whatever fix airplanes. I don't really care. That's how it works. But you get in it. Why? Because you trust the man that created it. Hallelujah. You trust the man that built and gave it to you. Gave you the ability to get in. I can tell you this. You trusted God with salvation. I can tell you this. Salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's not something different or something better. Uh, but what the Holy Ghost should do is make what you got at salvation a whole lot better. Uh, aren't you glad that you're saved here tonight? Aren't you glad you're on your way to heaven? Uh, why don't you get the Holy Ghost? It'll make your trip to heaven a whole lot easier. It'll make it a whole lot lighter. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've been a lot of places. Praise God. We played paintball when I was younger. That's where they shoot these big old balls of paint. They hurt sometimes. Hallelujah. But it's fun. It is. My dad bought me a couple guns. The first one he bought was a Tipman 98 Custom. Praise the Lord. He knows what I'm talking about. We got a witness in the house. So he, he can tell you I ain't lying with what I'm about to tell you. Mine had a flat line barrel. You ever seen one of them? It's that barrel that curves up and it's got a whole, hallelujah, and it makes it go farther and straighter so you can hit somebody way out there. Had a little scope on it. You couldn't see it with the mask on, but it looked cool. I had a hose. I connected to a tank back here so you have more freedom moving. Oh, my dad, he had more air tanks and we knew what to do with. Oh, he made, I'd put a 20 on that, not the little dinky 15s or 14s or 12s, whatever they were. I get the 20 ounce. Oh, I wanted the big one. So I got in a, you know, got in a battle with somebody. I wanted to have enough air to at least outlast them. And I didn't, I didn't lose because I ran out of air. Oh, but I mean, that was a good gun. I liked it, but I remember he bought my, I think it was for my birthday. I don't know if you ever had seen one of these, but I had a Tipman A5 with electric trigger. Hallelujah. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, you see that? His face light up when I got talking about them things. Hallelujah. Oh, he likes that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hallelujah. If we get, oh, praise the Lord. But he got, he got electric trigger on that. You know what that is? That's a deal where you if you put a battery in it and you punch a little button, you can select from one shot, one pull, and then you can select three shot bursts. And then you can put it on automatic. Hallelujah. And you know what most, you know, I and, and these other guys and kids would come out there and they'd have them little dinky spiders and all that stuff. And they'd get out there with that double trigger showing off, thinking they're cool with a barrel that long. i pull out that barrel that was like this long. And I'd twist it on my gun. It didn't look all that fancy, but I'd hit that little button and put it on full auto while we were all warming it and I'd just paint something with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, there was fear come on their face. But you know what? I, I, I liked the first gun, and it was a good gun. Still got it back home. But I never played with that first gun ever again if I didn't have to. 
because my dad had gave me something better. Hallelujah. It didn't do anything different before, but it did what that first gun did before, just a whole lot better. Hallelujah. All I can tell you this, the Holy Ghost ain't come to do something different than what salvation did for you. It's come to do what salvation did for you a whole lot better. All I can tell you this, so if you're saved here tonight, what's it gonna hurt to get full of the Holy Ghost? It ain't gonna hurt you none. It'll just make what you got already a whole lot better. It's better. I said it's better. Hallelujah. And you see, I understood one thing is there was very few of the other guys and other men and my sister, she would play too. Esther would play. She's, I know she's crazy, but she would play. Hallelujah. I'd say that to her face if she was here. I hope she's watching because hallelujah. Oh, but hardly any of them had one of them guns that was fully automatic. You didn't have to be a good shot when you just stick it around the corner and hold the trigger and it just, as long as it was pain in there. And you know, it's a fearful thing when you hear that thing just, just painting, sound all, sound like kind of, and just ba 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 ba. It was a fearful thing. And you know what? I'd walk on that. I never, I never got any other gun if I didn't have to because I was given something greater. I had an advantage. Hallelujah. I said I had an advantage over my enemy because what my father had given me. If you want to have the victory, God has given you the weapons that give you the advantage over the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shit, he's giving you the weapons. Oh, that you can have the victory. Hallelujah. 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 You see, you need to understand this here tonight, and and I'm not going to preach a whole lot longer, but you need to understand what's in the brook. You say, well, David just pulled out five smooth stones. He did. But he pulled out smooth stones, the Bible says. So if he pulled smooth stones out, they had to be in that river for a while. The water smooths them out. We know, we, we, we know the water over time erodes things. What I'm telling you here tonight is that brook was there before David probably ever was born. And there was rocks placed in the brook that were there for David's victory if David would just get in the brook. You see, you think your battle is something that God can't quite give you the victory. You think God don't really know what you're going through. You think, well, it really ain't like that. Listen, God put the weapons in the brook before you ever were born. Oh, he put the weapons in the brook. Jesus said it was expedient that he go away, that the comforter might come. He's saying it's of the utmost important. The Son of God, the Savior of the world said, I gotta leave so you can have what you need. What you need is those weapons God has prepared for you. If you ain't got the victory, it's because you ain't got in the brook and got them out yet. Hallelujah. Get in the brook. Get in the brook. I feel that a lot of times we come to church and we say we're glad for the moving of the Spirit and we might be and we're glad for the touch of the Holy Ghost and we're glad and you might be and if you are praise the Lord for it I can tell you this I'm sure that water felt refreshing I'm sure that water was cool and David might have reached down and got him a drink oh he might have put his feet in the water for a moment but you know what happened he didn't come to merely be refreshed by the water he come to get something out of the water to take with him to the battle your problem is it's not the church you go to it's not the preacher behind the pulpit it's not the song leader or the piano player your problem is is you get where the water's flowing and you get nothing out of it for yourself hallelujah 
You got to get in the brook. Pull something out. I dig until you touch God. Dig until you hit what you need. Dig that woman with the issue of blood. She went and she crawled until she touched Jesus. Oh, that blind man had Jesus anointed his eyes and said, go off. He went until he found the water and was. I know it was hard walking blind. Oh, but God said, go do it and you'll see. Here tonight, get up and get in the brook until you get what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come and we're glad for the touch of God. But God put the brook there to pull things out that he might empower you, oh, that he might give you boldness, that he might give you the words to say, that he might give you an anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage, that he might give you what you need. You say, well, I don't always understand. Listen, the Bible says, oh, that if you get there, he'll give you what you need. He said, don't worry about what to say. The Holy Ghost will make sure when you get there you know what to say oh I can tell this Jesus when he went up into heaven he said now listen you don't go do nothing else until you're endued with power you don't go do nothing else if the church of the living God was born in Pentecost it must live in Pentecost if we go have that victory it's got to be in Pentecost it's got to be in the victory Hallelujah. How many know here tonight that Pentecost is not just a, and really it's, it's very little of a doctrinal belief. Amen. Understand that. It is a doctrine, but Pentecost was never meant to just be a doctrine. If all it is is a doctrine, it's, it's hallelujah. It's, it's, it's like, a, what's the word, oxymoron or something like that? I'm not big. I'm not good with big words, but none of what I'm saying is, if all you know is you got it up here, and you ain't got it in here, Amen. well, it don't matter. Pentecost was meant to be something received. It was meant to be a personal experience. Oh, he said, you go until you believe in the Holy Ghost. No, he said, till you be endued with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you see, the disciples they come to a city and they said, do you believe in the Holy Ghost? Is that what they said? No. They say, you think the Holy Ghost is a good idea? I don't think that's what they said either. They said, have, have, you, have, you, have you preached about the Holy Ghost yet? No, they said, have you received since you believed? Hey, it, wasn't, it wasn't a doctrinal thing. Oh, you see, it was about receiving. The Jews said, you know what? We can't, we can't say God don't want to touch the Jews and God, or the Greeks and the Gentiles because the same Holy Ghost that fell on us fell on them. Their doctrine went out the window. Their theologic stuff went out the window. When the whole, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not for unethical things and slap the Holy Ghost on it. Don't, don't, do, don't do that. Don't come in here with, with foolishness and slap the Holy Ghost on it. God to judge you. Oh, oh, and your pastor will probably kick you out and if he needs help, he can call me. And we'll, we'll, hallelujah. I don't come. I, what I'm saying is, is the Holy Ghost is something to be received. Oh, it is a power. It is the move. It's not something. I've seen a lot of people believe it. They wouldn't go to a church that didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But I don't know if they believe in, in living that either. You throw a snow. It's not about going to the right church church that believes that you need to but you got to receive it for yourself yeah. Yeah. hallelujah you say well I, I don't know about all that tongue stuff don't worry about the tongues I'm not telling you you're going to get it without it so don't worry about it you get up here you get in the flow God will God take care of the tongues if somebody tried to teach you how to speak in tongues you just look at them tell them shut up and go on and you, and you continue to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, don't, don't let nobody mess you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know that little game, the operator game, whatever, you can't touch the sides of buzzes. If somebody said, you got a chance to win $5 million if you can complete this thing. If somebody decided to have a normal conversation with me while I'm doing that, I'm going to slap them and say, get on down the road. 
and then I'll repent and go talk to him later and give him five, five grand or something out of 10 million, you know? Praise the Lord. Oh, you, what are you saying? It's, it's something important. Hallelujah. Oh, don't let nobody else mess you up. You get in where God's moving. All right, I can tell you this. What you need to do is you need to dig until you get what you need. Don't come down here and just, uh, and just raise your hands and say, well, it didn't happen and go home. That you come and say, I'm not leaving until God fills me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, you say, well, I don't know if God wants to fill me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus died on the cross that you might be saved. So when you're saved, you can be sanctified to be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus died and left so you could have him. Who told you God didn't want to fill you? He wants to fill you. It's a plan of God to fill you. It is the will of God that you live full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You say, what Bible you got for that? Ephesians said, understanding that which is the will of God. Be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be ye filled. Hallelujah. I can tell you this. Are you through us? No, I'm telling you, God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you. If you leave this place without victory in your life, if you leave this place without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it wasn't because God didn't want to fill you. I can tell you this. God came here tonight to fill you. He come that he might pour him himself out on you. The disciples never questioned whether God wanted it to do it or not. They just asked the people, said, do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want to receive it? I'm going to ask you here tonight is do you want it? Not the preacher, not the song leader. Do you want it? Don't point fingers at so-and-so. Do you want it? Do you want to be full of the Holy Ghost? Do you want to live full of the Holy Ghost? Do you want to have victory that comes from the brook here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's all that important. Hallelujah. We do a lot of things that aren't important. Oh, but we do it because we like it. I can tell you this. Uh, I, I remember I was talking to somebody, and they told me, basically, you didn't have to speak in tongues to be full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I almost did that too. Praise the Lord. But, I, you know, when you, when you preach, you, you know, you try not to hurt people's feelings sometimes. And so, sometimes. And then, <laughs> hallelujah. And so, but he, he, then he later explained to me, but tongues are a deeper walk with God in the Holy Ghost. I said, well, this is my question then. If everybody that you claim's got the Holy Ghost... How come they don't desire to speak with other tongues if it's a deeper walk in what they got? You see, the Holy Ghost is not a separate train track. It's just farther down the track. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is, is if you're saved here tonight, you need to seek the Holy Ghost. You need to. Somebody not thirsty for the Holy Ghost is somebody dying. You throw rocks. No, I'm here to tell you, is a man that won't drink water. He's a dying man. A man that won't eat food is a dying man. Oh, you, you, you take all these little, that little baby here, them little kids. You, they stop growing and they don't grow for a while. You know what you need to do? You need to take them to the hospital because something ain't right because something living grows. Oh, something living, oh, it wants more. What keeps it alive? You thrown our snow. Jesus gave me life. He set my soul on fire. Oh, the Bible said he gave me newness of life. Oh, and then he said, now I'm going to give you some more if you want it. Oh, and I can tell you this, the Holy Ghost is just more of what you already got. Oh, why don't you want it here tonight? Why don't you want it? Oh, I can tell you this, the devil don't want you to have it. That ought to be a enough for you right there to just get it because the enemy don't want you to have it. Oh, you ought to have a desire here tonight to get full of the Holy Ghost. It is the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God wants to fill you. I said he wants to fill you. Church, the church was born in Pentecost Revival in America come by Pentecost. Regardless of denominations, denominations for the most part were born out of Pentecost, every single one of them. Methodist, Pentecost. Presbyterian, Pentecost. Are they that, that now? No. 
Assembly of God, Pentecost. The Pentecostal Church of God is just a split of the AG. Uh, but they're Pentecostal. Uh, and you, what I'm saying is, it's Pentecost. Even a Baptist, if you, you study history long enough, it's, you, I ain't got time to say all that, but the Baptists are only Baptists because the Catholic Church was sprinkling. They said, that ain't right. We got to do what John the Baptist did. So thus, they're Baptists. Hallelujah. At least some of them. And that, that was years and years ago. But nonetheless, I, now what are you saying is, is things were born in Pentecost. So who am I to tell you we can live without it? Oh, here tonight, oh, God wants to fill you. Oh, he put that brook there so David could have victory. David had to cross the brook to face the enemy. Oh, but you know what? He stopped along the way and said, you know what? I believe there's something in here from God that I might have victory. Oh, what you need to do here tonight is you need to come to the brook. I, you ain't going to have victory outside in the world unless you visit the brook. Oh, I visit the brook. You say, well, I don't understand everything. That's all right. You can get in the brook and you can have it for yourself. Do you want more of God? Are you hungry for more of God? Do you want to live full of the Holy Ghost? It's for you. Jesus paid the price on Calvary. He rent the veil so you can live full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand here tonight as somebody comes to the piano? Oh, hallelujah. Do you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Oh, do you want the moving of God? Oh, do you want to live full of the Holy Ghost? There's victory in the brook. I said there's victory. You got giants in your life? There's victory. Sis, there's victory. Brother, there's victory. There's victory over sin. There's victory over depression. There's victory over anxiety. There's victory, brother and sister. There's victory in the brook. I said there's victory in the flowing of the Holy Ghost. You say, I got problems. There's victory in tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God, Lord, we ask God that you'd have your way here tonight. God, move by your spirit. God, touch every heart and life. Lord, God, let your river flow. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, the question is, is do you want it? Oh, it's not, do you need it? You need it. You know you need it. Oh, it's not a question of, well, I don't know everything. I don't know if God wants to fill me. He wants to fill you. So you need it. God wants to do it. And I'm going to tell you this. God is going to fill you tonight if you're willing. God is willing to fill you. And if you, you're hungry, he said this, Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Do you want it? Hallelujah. Do you want it? Do you want to live full of the Holy Ghost? Do you want victory? Hallelujah. Oh, why don't you come? I come stand in the front. Come kneel. Whatever you need to do, come seek the Holy Ghost. Come praise the Lord. Get in the brook here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, it ain't enough to believe it. It ain't enough to have it 10 years ago. You need it right now. I said you need it right now. If you've been filled, you need to be refilled. Hallelujah. You need God to flow over you one more time. Oh, come on. Why don't you come? Let God have his way in your life. It ain't going to hurt you to have more of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God, all oh, these altars are open. Come seek the face of the Lord here tonight. Hallelujah. God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on. Get in that river. Get in that brook tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. We're inviting you to come and to step in that brook tonight. Let's pray together. Let's seek God together. Let's ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Be used of God to lay hands on others to fill, be filled with the Holy Spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Come on. 
Amen. Step out of the boat. Believe God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, we need your touch tonight. Come on, church. Believe the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord God, we need your help tonight. We need your touch tonight. We need the Holy Ghost tonight. We need the river tonight. We need the power of thy spirit tonight. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, God. Touch us tonight, Open God. Up Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come get in the brook. Come get in the brook tonight. Come get in the brook tonight. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we Pentecostals know how to pray, right? Come on, help us pray tonight. Come help us pray tonight. Get the victory tonight. Get the victory tonight. Hallelujah. Get the victory tonight. Sisters, come pray for the sisters. Brothers, come pray for brothers. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord.
and your sisters in the Lord that are seeking for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. God, we want the river of God to flow. We pray that heaven would open up. We pray for the flow of that river, God, that will step in that brook, Lord, that will receive what you have for us, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I pray. Hallelujah, church. Cry out to God. Jump in that river, jump in that brook, 
Jump in, church. Hallelujah. Jump in. Hallelujah. Believe God tonight. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I pray tonight. God, I pray tonight. God, receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, church, pray, church, pray, church, pray. Come up here. Stand right up here. Lift your hands to heaven tonight. All together as a body of Christ, just lift your hands and begin to pray. Hey, man, come. Come be a part. Come jump in that brook. Come and believe God. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven tonight. Intercede. Let your voice be heard. In the name of the Lord, I pray tonight. Come on up here, church. Stand up here. Lift your hands to God. Pray tonight. Ask God tonight, Lord, help us in this house. God, fill us in this place. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost. We want to be a dude with power from on high. Oh, God, I'm jumping in the brook. I'm receiving what you have for me. I want the victory. I want that river. I want that life. I want that empowerment. I want God. I want what you have for me. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh. God, we pray. Oh, Lord Jesus. God, we praise you, Lord. We ask you tonight, Father. Oh, God, we worship you in this house. We worship you at this house. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we pray in the name of the Lord, we worship you. Come into the presence of the Lord tonight. Come into the presence of God tonight. We want the form of the latter rain. We want the promise of the Father. We want what you have for us, God. Amen, the church of Acts. And God, you're the same God today. Oh, let us experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us be endued with power from on high, clothed with your power. Divided tongues as a fire to sit upon the church, the presence of God. Hungry for God, thirsty for God, desiring God, wanting God. I pray in the name of the Lord. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we come against doubt. 
We come against unbelief. And we come to you believing God by faith according to your word. God, receive of the spirit of God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We pray right now, Father, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we ask you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You just believe God, sister. Lay hands on her. Believe the Lord.
jump in that river tonight. Lord God, move with the Holy Ghost. Move in this house. Move on your people. Fill them with the Spirit of the Lord. I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus. It's wonderful. We praise you, Lord. God, we worship you. Oh, Lord. Jesus, we praise you, Lord, in this house. We worship you, Lord. Glorify the name of the Lord. sanctuary tonight oh lord we wait on you tonight lord god we worship you in this place we exalt your holy name oh lord we believe in the power of thy spirit we believe in the word of god hallelujah we believe lord tonight we believe lord hallelujah lord oh god oh lord jesus
Through tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come into his presence tonight. I want you to come step inside that brook tonight. I want you by faith to step in that brook right now. Hallelujah. Believe in Jesus, hallelujah. Trust in the word of the Lord, the message tonight. Believe it by faith. Receive the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the gift of God tonight by faith. Hallelujah, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you. God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
tonight lord hallelujah halala kamba baba bashala kalala kalala kiamba baba bashala ko la kiamba baba bashala kalala kiatra ba kosha ndre ba ko andara ba kiala la kiatra ba kosha ndre ba ko la kiatra ba ko la kandara ba kiandra ba kosha ndre ba kosha ndre ba ko la baba baba bashala kalala ki kandara ba kosha ndre ba ko hallelujah oh hallelujah lord hallelujah Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus, we praise you Lord. We worship you Lord God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We pray in the name of Jesus. We praise you Lord. We worship you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, and we exalt all Thee, O oh God, my Lord. Lay hands on our brother tonight. Lay hands on him tonight. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Amen. Receive the Holy Ghost tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we believe tonight. Hallelujah. Oh God, in the name of the Lord, Spirit of God, touch my brother tonight. Fill him with the Holy Ghost tonight, God. I pray the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I open my heart up to Christ. I open my heart up to the gift of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I open my heart up to Jesus by faith tonight. I ask, I knock, I seek tonight, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we love you and we need you and we praise you tonight, God. Hallelujah. sing glory to your name sing glory to your name oh lord glory to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be Sing glory to your name. 
praise tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. This is the answer, church. This is the answer. This is the answer for your home. This is the answer for your kids. This is the answer for your marriage. This is the answer for your church. This is the answer for your ministry. This is the answer for the world. Jesus Christ, this is the answer. This is what the church must come back to. This is what the church must ask God for and continue to seek the Lord, to be filled and to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is the answer. Praise God, it is the answer. Praise God, we have the word. Praise God, we have the truth. Praise God, you heard a good preacher preach it tonight, straight down the pipe. Praise God for that, because it's becoming more rare these days. Thank God for Pentecostal churches. Thank God for people that believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for people that tarry, that pray, that seek God, that intercede. Thank God for people that still believe the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. This is what we must do and also be an example to others to do as well. That the, our children and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren might see what it is to pray, to seek, to knock, to tarry, to ask, to believe God for what God has for his people. we got to jump in that brook and pull out those stones. God has something for you. But you got to jump in that brook. Amen. I'm going to tell you, this is what I'm seeing these days, even in a lot of Pentecostal circles, Pentecostals that know, Pentecostals at one time experienced the power of God, revival, the fire of God, but I'm finding a lot of folks are standing next to the brook looking at it, but they're not getting in it. They look at the water, they know what's there, they know they can have it, they know they can receive it, but they just stand there and they look at it. They just look at that brook. Well, I'm telling you, folks, you got to get in it. You got to get in that river of life. You got to get in that. Say, Lord, I want all of you. I'm not holding back. Cut the cord or whatever's holding me back. And I just want all of you, all of you. And I want you to have all of me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The church is getting into a lot of things these days. That those things don't bring power. They might, they might energize the flesh a little bit. They might bring some emotion, but they don't bring power. It doesn't bring the power of God. It doesn't rain down fire from heaven. It doesn't bring the power of, of Pentecost in the church. And I'm finding today that a lot of churches want the flavor of Pentecost without having Pentecost. They want the flavor of Pentecost without having the Holy Ghost. They don't want to have to pray for it. They don't want to tarry for it. They don't want to have to wait on the Lord. They, won't, they don't want to have to sacrifice for it. But I'm telling you, folks, this is what we must have. This is what we need. This is what we must have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, we love you tonight. Lord, we worship you, Lord God, in this place. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we praise your name tonight. Lord, we worship you. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, God, praise the name of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, God, praise your holy name, Jesus, oh, Lord, God, hallelujah, Jesus, we bless your name tonight, Lord, oh, Lord, in your presence.
praise God. I encourage you, church, to continue seeking God, believing the Lord. When I was seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was praying in my house, praying in the car, praying at church, praying in services, praying, praying, believing God. Came that Sunday morning. I don't know, just the day that God chose. I lifted my hands to pray, someone to pray for me for healing at that altar call. And all of a sudden I heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind. The Spirit of God came and right then filled me with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. And our brother is right. It makes what we have even better. <laughs> it makes it better. Helps us to go further. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will help us live holy, live righteous, live for God. Empowerment, understanding makes Jesus more real. Combat the powers of darkness, spiritual warfare. Uh, we need this. We need God. Amen. Get back to just what that Bible says. Seek Him. Hunger for Him. Ask. Knock. Believe God for more. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful service. You're more than welcome to stay and pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I want you all just to thank our brother for coming today, coming up here all this way. And again, if you would like to bless him, let's be generous and, and just, uh, you can put it in the offering tonight, the left basket over there. If you want to come talk to me after service in the room there, I can, uh, if you want a debit card, credit card, we can do it that way as well, okay? But we've had a good day today, very uplifting services. Lord's been helping us. And praise God for this. Just wants you to seek Him more, doesn't it? Hunger for Him more. Amen. Don't, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep believing the Lord. Church, keep believing God. Hallelujah. You can have the victory. You can have the victory through Jesus Christ. You received it tonight. Wow, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody else want to testify tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
praise the Lord. Lord Jesus. Just keep praying. Keep believing, Lord. Yeah. 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 God praise tonight. Hallelujah. Well, you just keep serving him, sister. Doesn't matter. He just that's all right. good day today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand together tonight. Praise God. Love you, church. Hallelujah. We give them all the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord's good church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Deathridge, we're so glad you come today. We give you all the praise give God all the praise for you and and thank you so much give you all the praise give God all the praise for you amen for coming minister the word of God tonight hallelujah God's good church amen tomorrow night ladies you have bible study at six o'clock six thirty six thirty tomorrow night praise God amen let's pray together father God as we come to you in the name of the Lord thank you God Oh, God, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for these services today, this morning, tonight, the presence of God. And, Lord, the word of God preached. I thank you for, Lord, Brother Dethridge and God, his ministry, the call of God upon his life, the anointing upon his life. I thank you, Lord. Ask you, God, to continue to bless him and use him and meet every need in his life, God. Open those doors you so desire for him to walk through. I pray in the name of the Lord. Father God, I, I thank you for touching the body of Christ tonight. I, I just thank you, God, for blessing the church, and I pray that you be with every single person, God. We walk in the victory and walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Father God, being a light and a witness and testimony of the goodness of God and the greatness of God, I pray that we'll have the victory. I pray, God, that we'll step in that brook, Father God. I pray that we'll receive all that you have, not just tonight, just to seek you, but every day at all times, God, to have a heart for you, a longing for you, a hunger for you, a thirsting for you, God. I pray that it be our life, God. This is what we do. This is what we are, Father. And we thank you, Lord. Be with this church. Be with the ministry and the body of Christ. We thank you, Father. Lord, we just give you all praise, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.